Hello everyone and welcome to Summer Tomato Live. Summer Tomato Live is your interactive online classroom where I tell you all you need to know about the food and health topics that you vote are the most important. I'm your host, Daria Pino, creator of the website Summer Tomato, where you can find even more healthy eating tips for food lovers. Summer Tomato is also where you can go a week from now when I post this episode uh, for the public and there you'll be able to find any of the show notes that I mentioned. So I'm gonna be mentioning some science and some references and anything that comes up in the show, I'll, I'll go ahead and add to the notes next week over at Summer Tomato. So I'm sure you guys will have a lot of questions. So like I said, feel free to call in or use the ask a question button. And if you aren't watching live, so if you're watching the recorded version of this in the future, then you can, and you want to participate in future shows, go to the URL at the bottom of the screen and tinyletter.com slash Summer Tomato and sign up there. The next live show is scheduled for next Monday, which is May 9th at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. And I'm actually really excited about this. It's gonna be my first episode with a co-host. I'm gonna be interviewing and having a discussion with Travis Saunders from the Obesity Panacea blog, which is a fantastic science blog. But he is a specialist, um, I think I believe he's a PhD student in exercise and exercise physiology. And so we're going to have a discussion about the role of exercise in weight loss. And I think you'll be pretty surprised with what he has to say about it. So it should be a fantastic conversation. He's up in uh, Canada, so it'll be late night for him. So it, it's very cool of him to, to agree to do this. So I'm really excited about that. That's next Monday, May 9th, and it should be great. So uh, today we're talking about probiotics. And I'm really glad that people, you guys voted this up because it's a topic that I've been really interested in lately for a number of reasons and I really was looking for an excuse to sort of spend several days digging through the science and I actually ended up spending way more time than I expected to on this. Like I was, you know, I, I postponed the show and I even did even more research um, while I was sick last week to try to find something better because... <laughs> There's just so little good information out there. And, I, you know, on the Internet, you know, it's like I start, I always start sort of on Wikipedia and, and, and just sort of get the basics of something. And then I go to the science and the science was just, and, and so when I search science, I usually go to the, the PubMed database and, and search for scientific literature and, and look for reviews and do some reading up there. And when I was looking for... This, it was just like, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything real. And so, so I started like flipping around a little bit more on the, the internet, like on just websites and stuff. And as far as I can tell, like most of the information out there is just like straight up like lies. Like, or like, not like lies, lies, but like people don't know what they're talking about. And they, they make all these claims that, and, and there's no scientific backing for almost anything that they say. But the good news is that there is some things and pre and prebiotics and fermented foods, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about what that is in a sec. Um, they do seem to be beneficial for certain things, which is encouraging. So let me just tell you a little bit about what probiotics are, if you're, if you're sort of new to this topic, like I was. So basically, as you may or may not know, your body is filled with bacteria, healthy bacteria that help you digest your food, help you absorb nutrients, and generally, it's, it's, it's what we call a, a symbiotic relationship. Like, they're, they help us by making food more available to us and making our gut healthy. And, you know, we provide a host for them to live in. And this is very good. You know, it's not, you know, a lot of times people just assume any sort of bacteria is going to be bad, but it's not. And what's nice about the, one thing that's nice about the bacteria that we have in our body is they help fight off the bad bacteria that we sometimes get. So if we get... Uh, an infection, um, you know, some, you know, when you're traveling and, and you can get sort of like traveler's diarrhea, like that, that's a foreign, unwelcome bacteria. But the, what's cool is the natural bacteria in your body will help you fight those off. And so there, there's all sorts of good reasons that you want like certain kinds of bacteria in your, in your body. And, you know, there's some in your mouth, there's some in your gut, and there's a, a whole slew of different kinds. I actually, um, a couple weeks ago, in the for love of the for the love of food post that I do on Friday, I, I shared an article with you guys about how <clears throat> we're learning that we all have very different sort of let's say like intestinal 
bacterial profiles. And the way the article described it that I posted is that it's almost like a, a blood type. Like there, and they said they identified three very characteristic types. Like everybody's going to have like slight differences, but apparently there's like three main types that characterize different people. And, you know, right now there's no easy way to test what you are. And even if we could test what you are, we, it doesn't really mean that much to us because we don't know what to do with this information. So I think what, what I'm getting at here is that this science is in its infancy. Like we're like for that we only now know like what most humans are sort of harboring in their bodies all the time. It's pretty remarkable. So take that with a grain of salt. And what, what, so what this means is that, you know, we're, we're getting new data all the time. And it's, it's actually a very complicated science because there's a lot going on, right? So there's a bunch of different kinds of bacteria. Everybody's different. Certain thing, you know, so there's a bunch of different kinds of foods that have them that, that can help you do, help you grow your own. Um, but the, the interaction of these bacteria with our bodies is, is still largely unknown. So we know they're there, they clearly are doing something, but what exactly they're doing is, is going to be tough and over the, over the coming decades we'll figure this out. I think we're seriously like decades away from understanding this in, in a very mechanical, meaningful way. So, you know, that, that makes it tough. And I, I honestly, I was a little disappointed. I was hoping I would, I would come out of here being some like pro on probiotics and like learn a lot like, you know, be able to give you very explicit instructions on what to do. But unfortunately, I think the, w the way it's going to end up is you're going to have to do a lot of tinkering for yourself because the science just doesn't have answers for you at this point. But let me just give you a little bit of a background about what probiotics are and sort of what sort of things they can help with. Um, so basically, the, so everybody starts talking about probiotics by defining them. So basically, they're live microorganisms that can confer a health benefit to humans. That's like the definition of probiotics. And there's also something called prebiotics. So these are foods that can selectively stimulate the growth or activity of the beneficial microorganisms in your body. So... And then, and then they, when they're mixed together, like when one food has both the, the organisms and the, the non-digestible food ingredients, then it's called a symbiotic. So that's like that's you know what we're starting with, and so yeah, so, so that's 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 what they are. <clears throat> so usually, so there's a few there's a. If you look on Wikipedia, for example, they list off like a dozen or so uh, probiotic strains. And, but there's some, the main big ones uh, are those lactobacillus or the bif, bif, bifidobacterium. <laughs> Gotta love these Latin names. And, uh, and then there's, you know, so there's lactobacillus acidophilus and bif bifidobacterium bif bifidus, <laughs> like they're just, but like the what, and they all do different things, and <coughs> and they're in all different kinds of foods, and what's sort of unfortunate is that we don't really know what they do, like we don't know the, what the differences are, and we don't, and everybody seems to be a little different on how they respond to the different strains as well, so my advice uh, at this point, I don't. I wouldn't like I don't think there's any reason to go out seeking certain strains of probiotics as like I don't think like some are better or some are worse. I think we don't really understand any of them and for you to figure out what works for yourself, you're just going to have to try and see if if it helps. So, um when I was looking through the literature on things that actually can be benefited from probiotics, the main one that was like hands down true, <laughs> like this, this actually helps, is like any sort of uh, digestive, like diarrhea problems. Um, and mainly if the ones that are specifically induced by antibiotics. So when you take an antibiotic, like let's say you have a sinus infection or something, and you take an antibiotic, uh, so it'll kill what's bad, all the bad bio, uh, bacteria in your body, but also obviously it'll destroy good ones as well. And this can really upset your stomach because, like I said, those bacteria are, are necessary for 
proper healthy digestion. And so probiotics seem to be fantastic at helping with this problem. And also with, as I mentioned earlier, um, when you travel and sometimes you get food that maybe has like bacteria that your body's not used to, probiotics can be really helpful with this. So anybody who's traveled, you know, to, um, you know, I know in California, people always have complain about traveling to Mexico or sometimes traveling in uh, China or a- other places in Asia. Like you can be exposed to things that you're just not used to and it can upset your stomach quite a bit. So probiotics should be able to help for things like that. Um, and there's decent evidence that it also helps with other gut sort of problems. So um, irritable bowel syndrome, a lot of people complain about, and it, it, it should be able to, it sometimes can help with this, but it's strain specific. So, you know, it's not like just drinking kombucha is going to fix it for you. It might fix it for someone, but you might have to try yogurt or sauerkraut or kimchi or something else, and, and that might help. Um, they, let's see. Yeah, and, and so also leaky gut syndrome. There's some evidence that, that so that's like when your intestinal barriers aren't, aren't quite intact, then probiotics, there, there's some evidence that probiotics can help with that as well. But again, it's strain specific. And another thing about the probiotics is the science is a little bit difficult to interpret because it seems like there's a very high placebo effect. So basically, if you tell people this is going to be beneficial food that's going to help you with your stomach, it, it almost doesn't matter what it is like because people will feel better for that reason. So... <clears throat> It's, it's really hard to tease apart how real these effects are, but there is consi- it's consistent, evidence is consistent that it's helpful, but it's not conclusive. Um, there's also has been some uh, suggestion that it can treat constipation, that it can also help with um, like things like yeast infections. This is, by the way, the, some of the grossest science I've ever read, <laughs> so I'm really glad that this is not the science that I did when I was in uh, graduate school. Um, uh, it, so probiotics can also seem to help with uh, maybe urinary tract infections. Um, there's some some people have suggested that it can help with bladder cancer. That people who eat a lot of probiotics have a less tendency to bladder cancer. I don't think that we can say that yet, but it's possible. Uh, and one of the more encouraging. Um, benefits of probiotics seems that it seems to help with immunity, and that includes respiratory tract infections, so your lungs <clears throat> and you know sinuses and things like that. So while the, well, none of the evidence is very conclusive, it seems to be consistently positive, which is you know encouraging. But like I said, we don't know the mechanisms we're working on, uh, or the mechanisms by which it work, and we don't really have any data on which strains are going to help which people and, 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 and then you get into the issue of like dosage, right? So how much, how much probiotic do you need and how often? I don't, we don't really have the answers to these things yet. So, and, and, but one thing does seem to be can, true in general, the probiotics, they don't stay in your system. So if you, if you're, if you can't like eat yogurt for a month and then be like, okay, I've replenished my you know, friendly flora, and expect it to stay that way, you have to continue to consume the probiotic foods to, to harbor that. So if, if you find that something is beneficial, you want to stick with it to, for the ongoing benefits. <coughs> oh, and then I had, yeah, I had, there was a few other things that I have in here that they said that they might, probiotics might help with, but the data isn't conclusive. Bladder cancer was one of them. Uh, tooth decay is another because you have a whole slew of uh, both beneficial and non-beneficial bacteria in your mouth that, uh, you know, can, so if you get that balance better, it might help prevent tooth decay. Also, there was a little bit of evidence that it helps with um, bone health, bone mineral density, which is interesting. They, they hypothesize that maybe it was because they're helping you absorb minerals better, which is a, a function of probiotics. So, you know, there's all sorts of, there's all sorts of you know, intriguing possibilities here. I, I definitely don't see any problems with including probiotics, except some, there was like, somebody mentioned, something I read mentioned that there is a, theoretically, somebody with immunocompromised people, it wouldn't be good. 
Um, but I don't think that, I don't think that's very, con like it wasn't conclusive. It was sort of a theoretical um, problem, but I don't, I don't, I didn't see any actual like hard data to support that. So let's talk a little bit about the sources of probiotics since that really is going to be what impacts you guys because you're the one, like, so the best way to get probiotics, as far as I can tell, is through food. Um, the pill forms, pill forms can be effective if, especially if you need, if you want like a, a stronger dose. But one of the issues with the pill forms is you have to remember these are live living organisms. So like a hard pill that you keep in the shelf is probably not going to be your best bet. You probably want to stick with uh, the refrigerated ones. Um, but personally, I, the, for me, the data was not strong enough to take probiotics in pill form. I mean, I mean, if I was like having horrible stomach problems and and I, and I was like, you know, I'd exhausted all options, maybe I would I would experiment for myself with some sort of probiotic pill. But generally, the way I approach this is I just eat the foods. And, and I try to eat them regularly. And the, for myself, I actually have feel like I have seen a lot of benefit for my stomach. I used to have a lot of trouble digesting certain vegetables, um, cauliflower, the, the cruciferous vegetables, um, cabbage, and you know. And sometimes when people find my website and they start uh, eating a lot more vegetables, sometimes it, it can be a little bit difficult to digest all that all that new vegetables. And I think that probiotics could probably help with that, which is cool. So. So basically the way what probiotic foods are, are foods that have been, they call it like lacto-fermentation. So the, these, these, the foods ferment and then these, bacteria, these healthy bacteria get in there. And um, so anything that has been like fermented and is sort of sour, so there's a, a few dairy products that this applies to. So yogurt's a good one. Um, and I don't... It, it's not clear to me if those yogurts, those like special probiotic yogurts, I don't think that those are necessarily going to be any better than a regular yogurt, um, unless the yogurt is like highly processed. So the more highly processed yogurts are going to have less of the good bacteria. So and I and I also and also like the only you're not going to get a lot of benefit from yogurt if it has a lot of sugar in it. So most yogurt, I'm not sure if you guys know this, has obscene amounts. Of sugar, like more than like as much as ice cream almost. Like you'll play, there's like 17, 18 grams of sugar, um, which is way over my threshold for dessert. So I, I recommend always plain yogurt, and um, you know the Greek ones are nice. I, I I like fat in my yogurt. I don't like non-fat yogurt. So you know that's that's a it's a nice intro sort of probiotic food. Everybody you know most people are familiar with yogurt and comfortable eating it. It's not that weird. Um, once I, I sort of have gotten away from yogurt because I found some of the other uh, probiotic foods to be a little more effective for myself. And I'm guessing it's probably a probiotic dosage thing. So I, th I, th I, don't, I don't think it's that high in, in, in regular yogurts. Um, <clears throat> uh, so uh, an, another option that's from dairy is kefir. I, I think is how you say it, say it kefir. I don't know. It's K E F I R, and it's a yogurt drink. So it's basically like uh, it's like, but it's more. It's sort of like a mixture between yogurt and milk. It's it's more creamy and smooth. I've been putting it on my muesli instead of, uh, or or also it's like it goes okay in a, even in oatmeal and stuff. And it's it's a, it's more tangy, but not in a unpleasant way. It's a, it's really nice, um, and. That that is a really good source of of like probiotic bacteria, and I think it's a fantastic one. And also cheese, actually, there's some probiotics in cheese. So those are some dairy sources. The most common other sources, uh, well, so any sort of fer fermented cabbage foods. So your kimchi, if if you like the spicy Korean style, that there's actually been a lot of benefits associated with people who eat kimchi. Um, Again, it's hard to isolate if it's the kimchi or something else in the diet, but but there seems to be some some decent evidence that kimchi is really beneficial. Another one is sauerkraut. So somebody asked me a couple a couple months ago, I think, if they they associated these as pickled foods, and they asked if these were the only good pickled foods, or would any pickled food be good? And the answer is that these are not these are not pickle brines. This is a specific type of 
fermentation that happens with the cabbage. And so no, regular pickles are not a good source of probiotics, but kimchi and sauerkraut are. And um, you can actually make these yourself. So someone asked me how safe it is to make your own. If you follow the instructions, it's, it's fairly safe. Um, you know, you just have to be sure that, you know, I, we've, we've made sauerkraut here before in the house. And basically, you just need to make sure that it's totally submerged under liquid because w- what happens is you will grow mold and less healthy things if any of the food itself is above like exposed to the air. But you know, the, the point of it is it's supposed to be submerged underneath uh, some liquid that sh- is supposed to be a, it should be a good enough barrier to keep it safe and clean. Um, I've heard uh, great things about the kimchi recipe in the Momofuku cookbook. So I, if you want to try that, um, it's great. I know a lot of people make their own kimchi and sauerkraut. And I think, I think that's awesome. I, she also asked, someone also asked about uh, making kefir. I, I don't know about that one. I mean, I'm, I know people who make yogurt, and, and that's fine. I, I think as long as you're really careful and keep things sterilized and follow the instructions properly, all these things should be totally fine to make at home. Um, so another, so miso is another source of, it, it, miso is like a fermented soybean. So is natto, and so is a tempeh. These are all different kinds, different styles of fermented soy, and these are good sources as well. Someone asked me, though, and I think this is an important point, if, if, if you cook them, do they kill the probiotics? And the answer is yes. So generally, you want to eat these things raw or at least partially raw. So I had a friend um, tell me that he, if he wants to cook with sa- sauerkraut, for example, he'll throw some of the sauerkraut in there and cook it. And then at the end, we'll mix in some of the fresh raw stuff to so you know, so it just it gets warm, but it doesn't it doesn't cook it through all the way. So that, that, I think that's a pretty good solution. Um, another source of uh, probiotics is actually poi. So if you've ever been to Hawaii, they they, they, they have this stuff called poi. It's a it's a fermented uh, taro root, and uh, not everyone likes the taste. Uh, I think it's I think it's pretty awesome, but I mean it's not like. I don't know. I like poi. <laughs> Not everyone does, but uh, it, it tastes sort of like tea to me. It's got a little bit of a bitter, like tangy taste, but that's a great source. Um, uh, one that's become really popular lately is the kombucha tea, which uh, you know is, is another. It's another good source of probiotics. So you can experiment with that. Just they, they're really easy to get now at uh, Whole Foods and other, you know, sort of natural food stores. They're nice. They're a nice alternative to other drinks. So, you know, if you don't want caffeine or you don't want, or some people just have trouble drinking a lot of water. Um, but you don't, but you don't want to drink something with sugar, like a soda or even a diet soda is not that great for you. Uh, the kombucha is probably something you might want to experiment with because it doesn't have any sugar. Usually, make sure, <laughs> and uh, you know it's got these other health potential health benefits, and it kind of has a neat flavor. It's a little bit effervescent. That's that's how um, when I know I have a good kimchi when like because I, I I try the I buy different kimchi's from like all all the different stores in the city. I love just experimenting with them because people make really good ones. And my favorite ones, you open it and it like pops. The lid pops because it's so effervescent in there because the live, living bacteria is sort of doing their thing. And you taste it, and it's almost effervescent on your tongue, which is awesome. Um, and so I also wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the prebiotics. So this is something I didn't really know about uh, before reading about this. So there are, like I mentioned earlier, prebiotics are certain foods that are capable of either feeding the bacteria that you already have or, or help, help nourishing them and help grow them. And um, so one of the best ones is this... Uh, believe it's a protein called inulin and it's really common it's like there's a bunch of it in uh sunchokes jerusalem artichokes which are in season right now and delicious uh so those are really good for you another other sources are leeks onions garlic asparagus and chicory greens I mean, and, and i and i didn't you know, apparently these are these are also really good for sort of fostering your own healthy bacteria in your gut so that was a really cool thing. There's a, there's a bunch of other ones too, um, which I can I can I can post. I'll post a link to uh, during the, in the show notes next week with a full list of 
the sort of prebiotic foods, or common prebiotic foods, so you can get a sense of that. But I was, I was excited to see that so many of my favorite foods are already sort of doing these benefits or con contributing to the benefits. Um, so I, that's kind of it as far as I have. I, I, I'll reiterate that um, if you, you know, if you want to play around with probiotics, I definitely think it's, it's worth including them in your diet. There's uh, a lot of people swear by it, and there's decent data that, you know, it's, it's a very, you know, a lot, of some, the, a lot of cultures that have very healthy people usually consume some sort of probiotic food in their diet. And, you know, it, it, that's not the best evidence in the world, but it, I find it really interesting. And I, and I think that there is something to say about sort of keeping your, like, internal gut like in a in a very fortified sort of strong way and and I think that that you know it's worth I think it's worth including some in your diet so but but the issue is if you have a specific problem if you generally have a lot of stomach problems or if if you have any other issues that you think probiotics might help with I would recommend experimenting for yourself so start with something you like say sauerkraut and you know try eating it a, you know, every day or every other day, a tiny bit for a couple weeks, and see if that helps you. If it doesn't, it doesn't mean probiotics aren't going to help you. It means you should try kimchi next, or it means you should try kombucha, or it means you should try kefir because they they could all be different, and it could just be you aren't as receptive to one strain or another. So, and it does. Seem, I found a little bit of science that um, it does actually combos of probiotics seem to be better than single strains. So there is definitely some benefit in combining them as well. So, you know, just keep that in mind. I don't think it's something that you have to eat every day, but fairly regularly trying to get these things in your diet, I think is a great idea. So that's what I do. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's an exciting field and I'm looking forward to seeing sort of where it goes from here. So um, do you guys have any questions of, about this stuff? I'd love to take them. What do you think? Has anybody here um, tried probiotics or had any benefit from using them? You can tell me in the chat if you want. No, yes. Is anybody thinking about um, <laughs> using probiotics? Oh, here we have a question. Do you have any questions on how to eat sauerkraut? Um, well, do you like it? <laughs> I mean, it's so I uh, I just sometimes just like pull some out of the jar or whatever and eat it with like some eggs or put it on top of. So it's got, got sort of a, a tangy flavor. Um, I mean, obviously it goes awesome on hot dogs <laughs> and sausage. Uh, I, th I actually think it pairs really well with meat, to be honest. It's delicious. Um, but, you know, even just like a little, as like a little side dish, sometimes if you're eating something very rich, and maybe that, this is why it's good with meat, if you're eating something that's really either fatty or, you know, got a lot of, um, just a lot of bold flavors and you want to sort of brighten it up, that's a good thing to do. Almost like adding a acid or like a lemon, like a squeeze of lemon or something, and like or like, you know, just having, you know, some, uh, you know, like in uh, like if you ever go to get Indian food, like there'll be like all these rich spicy dishes, and then they'll have the like mint yogurt stuff on the side, kind of like that, just sort of like a, a nice contrast there. So, good question. Had you guys? I think my favorite personal uh, is is the kimchi. I just. I love it so much. So it can get really spicy, um, and then you can, there's different levels of spiciness that you can get. Um, I've been playing around with these different ones from this Rainbow Grocery, which is a, a local health food store here, and they come with like ginger in them and lotus flower and like all sorts of or lotus root, I guess, all sorts of delicious mixtures. And I just like I've been eating kimchi and eggs for breakfast, and it is awesome. Like it's it's like you know. You're, for some reason, after I eat that, I'm like not hungry forever, and it just feels just feels great. I love I love it. Love it for breakfast with eggs. <laughs> you know, even my dog likes it, which is he's so weird. <laughs> Toaster. 
Okay. Oh, good question. Is miso considered a probiotic? Yes. So miso is, is definitely a fermented soy product and it's definitely a probiotic. The problem is if you cook it, like if you make miso soup and you boil it, it's, you're going to denature it for the most part. Um, so generally what people recommend if, if you do want to use miso is to sort of stir some in at, at the last minute and try not to let it cook too much. Another thing that I've been doing lately is making miso-based salad dressings. So it has like, miso has this sort of nice umami uh, and salty, meaty flavor. So I'll just take, you know, a little bit of oil, a little bit of like olive oil and a little bit of like rice vinegar. It goes perfect with miso. And do like a scoop. And there's all different kinds of miso. There's red and white and brown. And so I'll just, you know, I like the white miso is always really like neutral and nice. So I'll throw some, like a couple of tablespoons of that in, in the oil and vinegar and, and stir it up and, you know, a little salt and pepper. And it's just delicious. And I use that to dress um, like grains, like quinoa or uh, farro and then I'll chop up some like vegetables and put them in there and make this like miso grain mixture. It's delicious. Really good. Great with some nuts like some cashew nuts or something like that like sliced almonds or something. Super good. Highly recommended. Highly recommended. <laughs> Do you guys like not natto? Oh there's some questions here. Uh, you have discussed the potential negative consequence of yogurt in the past and have addressed the potential benefits of yogurt. Given your knowledge of both sides, have you made a decision on how frequently you want to eat yogurt in a week? Uh, trying to think of what's bad about yogurt. I mean, too much... So, okay, so for me, I, I've... Potential negative consequence of dairy. Okay, uh... So, for me, the biggest issues with dairy are, are the hormones and so I just make sure to get pastured dairy so I get my yogurt like that's I mean it's harder to find which is kind of why I don't eat it as much as I used to but I don't think there's anything wrong with moderate amounts of dairy it's the high doses that are really dangerous I think um but otherwise no I think I think it's fine I think I mean I don't even think there's anything wrong with having it every day I mean just one meal a day I think that's probably fine it's a little, I mean, it's a little much. <laughs> I mean, culinarily, I don't know if I'd want to have yogurt every day. But, uh, I'm trying to, so the, the biggest things with yogurt, make sure you get plain. And I just develop a taste for it. I mean, a really good, creamy, qu high quality plain yogurt is delicious. I mean, the non-fat dairy, Dannon plain yogurt is disgusting, right? It's like sour and like watery. It's gross. But, you know, I like to have that that dairy fat in there. I think it tastes makes it, it it tones down the harshness that can sometimes come with plain yogurt, and you know, and it makes it nice and creamy. and And I think it pairs beautifully. Like I I did a um, I had a yogurt with a, I cut up some ginger and some garam mas, uh, masala, like curry sort of flavors in there, and some. Um, cilantro and and maybe some garlic and I used a marinated uh, lamb chops in that it was awesome <laughs> I highly recommend that that's really good stuff uh, another good question is tempeh a probiotic food yes so tempeh is another probiotic food I personally have a lot of trouble eating tempeh not cooked I mean I'm not even sure you're supposed to I'm not, I'm, I'm not an expert in tempeh I, I like to I like it a lot um, and I've cooked with it a lot, but I always like make it really brown because I like it really crispy. So I don't know if maybe the inside is kept safe when I do that, but I kind of doubt it. So yes, technically it is, um, but I think it depends a lot on how you, how you prepare it. It's a great question, actually. Do you guys eat a lot of these foods intentionally? Um, have you heard this stuff before? Excuse me. Oh, wow, it was my first cough. Okay, it's going well. You eat yogurt once in a while? Okay. Yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't worry too much about yogurt. I mean, unless you're getting the hormone kind. You know, the hormone kind is a problem. <laughs> um, you know, miso is really nice, like uh, James asked about. And um, like I said, that dressing, that dressing, the miso, like, Salad dressing is awesome. 
So that's a really great way to do it because then you can just, you know, it's like, it's like, it's almost just like a vinaigrette with extra flavor. It's just really delicious. So you've heard a lot of things regarding the health benefits of miso soup. Hmm. Like, like just because of the probiotics? I mean, I think if a proper miso, you stir in the miso the last minute, so it shouldn't get that cooked. Um, I think most of the restaurants that I've had miso soup at, uh, it's really salty, like almost too salty. I have, um, I have this book. I use the miso recipe out of It's called Splendid Soups by, uh, sitting over here, by James Patterson, I think. Peterson, James Peterson, and I've cooked myself the miso recipe out of there, and it um, it's like light years better than anything I've had at a restaurant. It's really, really good. <coughs> so I, if, you, if you've never tried making your own miso soup at home, I, I recommend it. It's really delicious. Have I heard of macrobiotics? It uses miso without taking it to a complete boil. So macrobiotics, as far as I know, is like, like a diet, right, that like Gwyneth Paltrow does or something. And so so are you saying their recipe for miso warms it up without taking it to a boil? That's, pro that's probably great. I'm not a big fan of the macrobiotic diets. Well, they're not bad. I mean, like, like anything that is going to eliminate most of the processed foods from your diet is good. But they cut out what they call nightshades, which is, includes tomatoes, eggplants, all sorts of other delicious foods. And I think that's insane. Um, there are definitely some people who are sensitive to a chemical in those foods, but most people aren't. And I think cutting them out is really weird. So I think macrobiotic people are generally not scientists. <laughs> but, but there is definitely something to say with about uh, you know, not, not boiling the miso. So Aisha came in late. Did I already discuss potential weight loss from eating probiotics? I didn't see a single thing about weight loss. And what I, what I talked about at the beginning is that uh, this, the science on probiotics is really in its infancy. So we don't, like, these things will emerge. It does help with nutrient absorption and stuff like that. So it might help with satiety. Um, you know, if your body is getting more nourishment, it might, you might have less cravings and stuff like that, but, uh, you know, not specifically for weight loss. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's nice. There's just something nice about having like a strong stomach, you know, like not, I mean, you know, like building up so you're not super sensitive to things and Particularly, you know, some people get sensitive to certain kinds of vegetables, especially when they're raw. And if, if it can help you with something like that, I mean, that, I mean anything that will help you eat healthier is, is good and will ultimately lead to weight loss usually. So James found macrobiotics to be very bland. The foods, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I don't think there's that much science behind it. <coughs> there's no reason to eat bland food. Food should be delicious. <laughs> I feel very strongly about that. Um, any, anybody else? Anybody want to chat? Let's see. Who's in here? Okay. <clears throat> we are... We, so we have like 15 minutes left if you guys have more questions. If not, I mean, it was... A pretty short thing because, like I said, I, I looked forever and couldn't find that much solid data. Did I discuss kefir? Yeah, a little bit. Um, so I, I think it's great. I've actually just only tried it for the first time recently, and I loved it. I, I put it on uh, my muesli instead of yogurt, and it was, you know, I, I think it's great. It's, I like the consistency a lot, so it's like right between yogurt and milk. It's sort, of, sort of like you can pour it but it's still rich and creamy. I, I think the flavor was awesome. Like it had a really nice tang to it. Just reminded me, you know, in, in Europe, the I lived in Italy for a while <clears throat> back when I was in college. And uh, the yogurt there is t 
totally different. It's phenomenal. It's really, really good and creamy. And it, it kind of it has this different flavor. Like I remember my favorite flavor of gelato when I was living in, uh, in Italy was their yogurt. They're like, cause it's this natural yogurt taste and it's got this little bit of a tang, almost like a creme fraiche or something. So good. So I liked the, the flavor of the kefir and I think it's a stronger, it's a big, it's a better source of probiotics than yogurt. I, I think, um, it's just, it, you know, it, it's more, I think it's got more of that fermentation in it. And, and I think both of those have more than cheese. The cheese is a little bit as well, but I'll look more questions. What can you share about probiotics as an acne treatment? So I didn't see that addressed anywhere in the science, um, but a couple points. So we talked about this uh, quite a bit in the dairy episode a few weeks ago. Ba basically, dairy is pretty strongly associated with acne. So if you want probiotics in your diet, um, you probably want to, and you're worried about acne, you probably want to veer away from the, the dairy-based ones. That being said, it might just be the dairy that's like from industrial cows. So if you were to find pastured cow milk or yogurt that you might, you might be able to tolerate it and not have as much acne. I, my guess is that the acne it comes that associated with dairy comes from the hormones. And I don't know if it's, if it's the hormones that are given to the cows or like they, they're given growth hormones so that they produce milk all year or like just natural. I mean, it is, comes from a cow's like endocrine organ, right? It's a, it's a hormone substance. So, I mean, acne is a hormonal issue. And so, yeah, I would stay away from the dairy. And, and also sugars, sugar and um, potentially wheat. So these are inflammatory things. So there is some, inf so a lot of the information about probiotics shows that it sort of decreases inflammation in the gut. And, you know, while that's specific to the gut, it, there's some information that it may translate to better immunity in the respiratory system. So maybe it like does a systemic decrease of inflammation, which might help with acne. So potentially, but that science is like not, like that's not done at all. I was just sort of projecting based on what I, what I read already, but I, I, there's no data on that. I mean, seriously, there's no data on this stuff. Like I, I sort of put like the word kimchi and probiotic in the PubMed and there was like six entries like, and were, none of them said anything interesting. <laughs> like they were just like isolating the different strains and yep, there it is. There's, there's probiotics in there, but there wasn't anything like that I could point to and be like, look, you need to eat kimchi, you know, you know, they, they, I haven't seen any studies where like people ate kimchi like four times a week and they followed them for 10 years or anything like that. Like there's nothing even remotely like that, sadly. So... Yeah, and there was definitely nothing about acne. We're still like trying to figure out if it even like works. <laughs> awesome, that's a good question. Um, my sauerkraut, kraut, sauerkraut products come in a jar, never provide an expiration date. Do I, that is funny that you asked that because I, <laughs> I don't know if it expires. Do you, I mean, yeah, I've had the same issue. I don't know how long it's good. I mean, part of me wonders if it's, if it could stay good for a really long time, right? Like it's got this fermented thing, but I'm always scared to eat it after like I've had it open for a month. So that's a great question. I will write that down and go look that up. And um, if I find anything, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes because that's a really interesting question. Same with kimchi. I, I feel like, I don't know. I've never seen mold grow on them. <laughs> and I have one, I have a jar of sauerkraut that's like in my fridge. It's been there forever. I'll check it out. <laughs> See if it's got mold on it. But, I mean, yeah, You're eating open, opened food that's <laughs> been sitting around for a long time generally isn't a good idea. But I imagine it, but I imagine it stays better longer than, like, you know, foods that haven't been fermented. Oh, hi, Toaster. <laughs> I love puppy. He's so cute. Um, all right, does anyone else have any good questions? Um, well, okay, I guess we'll wrap up because I think I answered a lot of questions. It's, a little, it's not, not too early. Um, well, that was great. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, just 
Again, a reminder that we're, the next show is next Monday, the 9th, May 9th at 6.30 p.m. And I'm going to be discussing the role of exercise and weight loss with Travis Saunders from Obesity Panacea. And he is a expert, PhD in, um, or I think he's still a student, a PhD student, but uh, in exercise and physiology. So that should be a great conversation. I think you'll be surprised by some of his answers because um, he has a really interesting take on exercise. And... He's really smart, and he's up in Canada, and it's awesome that he's going to be. We can do this, like, interview, like, over the Internet. So I hope to see you then. And uh, so I'll probably, for, for office hours, um, I, I posted a lot, like, last week. I'll probably, since the next show is just a week away, I'll probably not have office hours. Oh, maybe I'll have office hours once this week. Maybe Thursday or Friday. And then we'll have the show on, on Monday, and then we'll figure it out from there. So thank you guys again for tuning in, and I, we'll talk to you soon.